Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Once again, uh, in my bedroom, um, I've got, you know, as I mentioned last episode, my uh, brother and my sister-in-law staying with me. At least we might as well quarantine as a family. Um, so yeah, they're in the living room and in the second bedroom. I have decided uh, to shoot this in the, in the bedroom with a little bit of a view and uh, a little peace and quiet. Now today, we're gonna actually talk about a little anecdote about my master watchmaker, Hanzi. You guys have probably seen him on a few of my videos. One of his favorite watches and the watch he may buy next. But of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Uh, today I'm wearing the PAM 111. Uh, one of my first ever timepieces, very rough and tumble. I feel like an appropriate uh, watch for what is happening. All around us and also guys please don't forget to check out delraywatch.com we are still shipping out watches uh, though I only go to the office once a week to make sure the orders go out we just got in a beautiful JLC master calendar beautiful triple calendar moon phase with a power reserve full box and paper set absolutely gorgeous and of course you can also check out the hot deal section where we have some heavily discounted stock available for sale where you guys can pick up a potentially fantastic deal. So yeah, guys, um, to kind of start the story, I mean, we have a master, we have a couple watchmakers on staff, but the one that's been with us the longest and a very good friend of mine, Hanzi, he's been on a few videos. And, uh, you know, he's talked about his, one of his favorite movements is the El Primero. And the other day I got a watch in um, and I texted it to him sent him a picture said hey Hans this needs inspection you know we inspect everything that comes in and he texted me back saying how it was a fantastic watch and how he loved this particular brand and you know even though I do quite like the brand I was a little shocked uh, as to why he would pick this specific brand and he told me a little bit more about it so this is more of an anecdotal story uh, unfortunately I can't have Hans with me here today for obvious reasons uh, but I will get him on camera at some point and I'll have him tell it from his side. So what we're talking about is the Maurice Lacroix Masterpiece series. So the one I texted him about is the one on DelrayWatch.com, the Maurice Lacroix Skeleton, uh, which is a fantastic watch for the money. But when I showed, him, showed it to him, he said he absolutely loved the Maurice Lacroix Masterpiece series of watches. And he got into this whole kind of deep, uh, conversation about it. I mean, particularly the ones he loves are the double retrogrades that have a module on top of it for retrograde calendars and retrograde seconds. Also, they've a, they've got a mystery dial uh, version as well, which is beautiful. And you know, the skeleton one I have is, is one of the less expensive masterpiece series and one of the simpler ones. It's, it's very beautiful machine made skeletonization. Um, but he absolutely loved them. And I asked him, you know, Hansi why is it that you love these particular watches? And, and you know, to my understanding, they were just 6497 watches with modules on top. Uh, with nothing wrong with that. I mean, my Panerai's got a 6497, but fairly basic movement. So I tried to understand why he loved it. And basically the gist of it was, yes, it is a 6497 base movement, which by the way, Hans loves because he sees it more as an engineering perspective as opposed to a watch collector perspective. I mean, yes, it's not a very, um, shall we say, elegant movement. It's, it's not a very rare movement, but it's a workhorse and he loves it. He says the 6497 as a timekeeper just works. And as a watchmaker, that's the most important thing. But he said on top of that, he finds the modules Maurice Lacroix put on top of these specific watches to be extremely interesting as a watchmaker. He said they were extremely well made, um, you know, better than, for example, or well, in his opinion, better than like the Dupuis de Pro calendar modules. He said the modules on top of these are second to none. And he also said Federico, lots of companies use modules. I mean, uh, Vacheron and AP use modular chronographs. Frank Mueller uses modules basically in everything. He said there's no shame on the modules. But essentially what you get is a 6497 with beautiful Maurice Lacroix decoration with an in-house ML module on it. And he said, what can get better than that? He's like, it's fixable. I can fix it. 
you know, it's decorated beautifully. Sure, not to the level of Patek or Vacheron, but it's sturdy, it's fixable, it's beautiful, and there's some really cool engineering going on with the skeletonization and the modules. It's not just something off the, off the shelf, it's something Maurice Lacroix worked pretty heavily on. So for him, he's like, that's perfect, because you don't pay a lot of money, um, it's a very, very well-made watch, according to Hansi, and I, I do agree, I've had, never had any issues with them. And for the money, it's just very hard to beat. Uh, to the point where after this conversation, he sent me a picture of the Maurice Lacroix he likes, uh, which is kind of the one I, I photographed up here, and he wants me to find one for him because he wants to buy one personally. So actually, if you guys have this watch, any of you guys have this watch and you want to sell it, uh, please shoot me an email. Uh, my watchmaker, Hans, would love to buy it uh, for his personal collection. He's, he doesn't have a huge watch collection. Uh, once again, he sees it more from an engineering perspective than a collector perspective. But I thought it was super interesting because a brand that you know I liked, and yes, I said a lot of their lower end pieces are, are, are pretty, you know, they're, they're not great. They're quartz, gold plated pieces, and I stand by that. And I've always liked the Masterpiece series, but I just love that my opinion was kind of validated by a master watchmaker of, you know, basically almost four decades. Um, I thought that was pretty cool, and I also love the fact that he loves it so much, and it's a piece that doesn't particularly cost a ton of money. Hopefully, uh, whenever, you know, this ends, and, you know, Hans is very, very busy, but I do want him to give his perspective on this in video. Because anytime I think as collectors we can pick up something that's so highly touted uh, and not have to spend a bunch of money on it, I think that's uh, a win for everybody. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Just wanted to share this, this story. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give this video a thumbs up. If you did, it really helps me out. I'm going to keep churning out videos uh, here because I'm going to be honest, I'm quite bored at home. So these are, are kind of fun to make. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys uh, watch them as well and it, uh, you know, brightens your day maybe just a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I can do that, but it'd be a nice feeling if I can. Uh, also, please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that content. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much. Take care and stay healthy.